G'day! It's spring, a little bit earlier than usual because of special circumstances this year. And I'm going to teach you how you can prepare your skis, bindings, boots and ski clothing so that they are in top condition for next winter. The first thing we're going to do is to prepare the base for summer. And that we do by cleaning it. So first of all, put a rubber band on the ski brake. Then, we take a brush. I have a steel brush today here. Give it a couple of passings like this from nose to the tail to brush off all dirt. We want to have a really clean base so the wax sticks nicely on it. Then have a cloth. Ideally use some like ba uh, wax, backs, wax? No. <laughs> Ideally use some ski base cleaner. That's like an alcoholic liquor, liquid that you can give it another passing. I don't have that and I'm not too worried about it either. I just have a slightly damp cloth where I remove the last dirt. All right, step two. So now we have a clean and dry ski and I got this cheap warm weather wax that quite frankly I'm used to have. Used to happy. <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna use quite a lot of it so the wax covers the edges so that the wax can help protect the steel from corroding or like rusting basically. So let's just do it. Oh. I think um, actually that wax was melting so quickly. I don't have the box anymore, so I'm not sure about the temperature. So I'm gonna crank it down a little bit because uh, <laughs> that got kind of intense how quickly it was melting. <laughs> and honestly, if you're a normal skier and not a World Cup racer, like don't worry so much about what you do with the skis in the summer. Just do it, you know, put on some wax, whatever you have at home. Warm may be ideal, but cold, you know, you'll be just fine with that too. Um, there we go. If you don't know how to wax skis, we also have a video up here and in the link below. Um, I have a how to wax video and also a video that's just satisfying to watch to me inspire you to want to do this. And do we want to scrape this wax, Jens? We do not want to scrape this wax. You just leave it like this. The base and edges are taken care of. Now we gotta give the binding some love. And the first thing you can do is you can just use the cloth from before, get some dirt off. You can use an old toothbrush and really get into the nooks and crannies, do some brushing. Once you've done that, the next thing is something many people forget. Use some grease. I actually have a bicycle grease here that is uh, okay to minus 20. So if you live in a really cold place, maybe you wanna buy a proper, grease for ski bindings but this will do the job just fine make sure you get some in on the the bits on the bindings go deep get it in there and also on the back there you remember when you bought the skis they were full of grease a little bit everywhere to move that around i'll actually use the toothbrush once again and just get it in there man this is going to be some smooth bindings check this out quite satisfying I would say. Next thing you want to do, you want to tighten the binding to the ski. And this is just to make sure that it's sitting nice and tight because the screws can undo themselves over the season. Like I couldn't give it much but I could give it a little bit. Make sure you have a big head on the screwdriver. Look at that, now it's out. You can just push it forwards. You can see here we got one, two, three, four screws. This one is a little wet. Here, so it's important also not to over tighten it. I have a little bit of feeling because if you over tighten it, you can pull out the base or ruin the base basically. The next thing we got to do is to protect the springs inside of the binding in the front and the back. And this is because the din basically works as a spring that gets pushed together. And the more it's pushed together, the higher the din is. And if you leave it fully pushed together, it may lose its springiness next season. Ta-da! Finished. 
So once we're taking care of the base and the binding, you just need to store it somewhere dry and cold until next season. If you're like really picky about your ski's performance, maybe you want to store it like this sort of. This to protect the camber, it's like minimum pressure on it. But I frankly don't care that much. I'll just show you down in my basement how I'll store it now. Here's actually my, this is my ski plank. I got quite a few skis that are going into storage soon. And I'm just gonna leave them like this. Standing together sideways. I noticed this ski plank. <laughs> it's actually really important. If I would leave the skis straight in this gravel here, they would rust quite a lot on the tips. To prepare the boots for summer, the first thing you gotta do is to take out the inner boots from yeah, the shell and then also remove the soles you have inside and then let them dry out. Somewhere slightly warm, but ideally not in the sun because things you care about shouldn't really be in the sun. As the boots now are drying, the next thing you gotta have in mind, all buckles and even the sole have screws and they tend to undo themselves after a while so tighten all of them you'll need a couple of different sizes usually from uh, insects inbus torques yeah phillips screw all all kinds of stuff actually so i'm gonna do that wow that's kind of loose oh that's tight one screw like inside of the buckle and then the rest basically also by this tool I think. When you look at the sole here, they can get really worn out. And if it gets too worn out, it may create a wobble in the binding. And then you may want to replace this piece here. Also the heel piece can be replaced in most boots. But I don't think I'm gonna replace these yet. They are worn, but not overly worn. The inner boots and soles, they are now nice and dry. Now we gotta put the inner boots into the boots again. This is how I usually do it, because these boots are stiff. They are almost room temperature. There we go. That went pretty well. Now the inner boots and soles are back inside. What's really important now is to buckle all the straps up and do it more or less the same tightness you would if you would go skiing. Just because if you don't do this, the boots have a tendency to lose their shape. We don't want that. Painful feet is like the worst when it comes to skiing. It's more or less the same tightness I would have if I went shredding. Next thing we're gonna look at is some of the ski gear, like gloves and clothing and gloves. I always ski with leather gloves because I find them to last much longer thus being like cheaper to own over the long run. This is something I do every couple of weeks. I take some uh, glove balm. This one is a specific glove balm. But I've also used something like this that's meant for boots basically. It makes the leather soft and nice to touch but it also makes it more water repellent. And I really I think I take the best care of my gloves, more than I take care of my skis actually. So I do this quite regularly. Now we're going to have a look at how to take care of our ski jacket and pants. And you should only wash your jacket and pants if they really need it. Either because it has lost its water repellency or it got it so dirty that it might have lost its ability to breathe. Uh, my jacket is dirty, so I want to wash it. My pants have lost its water repellency, so I want to wash it. The first thing we're going to do is to give it a wash, a normal wash cycle for both with some of this in it. There's different brands, I don't really care which one you use. And then once we washed it that time, we're going to wash it again with some tech washing. This is basically to help improve the water repellency of the fabrics. Before you wash it, you want to close all the zippers like that and also flip the garment inside out. And it's to protect the outer coating from the turbulent life inside of the washing machine. Chuck it in. 
read how much you need it again. <laughs> you can measure into the cup. That cup. <laughs> That was so smooth. You tried to play that off like it didn't happen, but we all saw it. Having retrieved a cup, <laughs> a measuring cup, I should use. Follow the instructions here. Put some of that in there. Two cups, actually. So now the base is waxed, bindings greased, gloves waxed too, clothing is in the washing machine. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. You can write a little comment below like what are your best tips on preparing your gear for summer and the coming season. I wish you a wonderful summer and I'll see you soon again. Ciao!